Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're looking at Topaz Sharpen AI. There, there is a brand new update, so if you're a Sharpen AI owner, you can get the update for this right now. And if you don't own Sharpen AI yet, I highly recommend that you get it. It's really an awesome program, and you'll see that here today. But they added some really cool new features, okay? And one of the features is batch processing. This is something we were missing, but now we have batch processing. By the way, this is the, uh, when you boot up uh, Sharpen AI, you get this Welcome to Sharpen AI screen here, which you can shut it off if you don't want to see it. But I just wanted to show you the new features. So the other, well, we still have the Sharpen modes, and these are fantastic. We have the regular Sharpen mode, um, we have the stabilized mode, so if you had a little bit of a camera shake, that fixes it. And it is amazing the way that works. I love stabilized. And then we have focus mode. So if you have a little bit of a soft image, uh, Sharpen AI will fix that. And it does a great job. And I've showed you some videos in the past about Sharpen AI. And it, it's one of my very favorite Topaz pieces of software. And then we also have a focus mode. So if you have a little bit of a soft focus issue, it'll correct that. And it does a great job. I've never seen anything work as well as uh, Topaz Sharpen AI for sharpening images. It's fantastic. Another feature they added was the masking uh, feature. So you can mask in the sharpening or take it away from areas you don't want it. So that's a really cool feature. And I'll show you all that stuff today. And then lastly, uh, we can uh, keep the color profile that the image had, or we could change it to like ProPhoto or whatever we want, or Adobe RGB, whatever you want. And the other thing you can do, you can convert your file format. Say you had a TIFF, you can convert it to a DNG. Or if you had a DNG, you can convert it to a TIFF or whatever, or a JPEG. I mean, it's it's really, uh, really wide open to how you can uh, save out the image here. Okay, so, but the batch processing feature is awesome, and the masking feature it's great okay so but let's dive into this and let me show you how this works and we'll do a little bit of review and i'll show you how good of a job it can really do so without further ado let's get started let's go ahead and close this welcome screen here so let's close it now you have two different ways of opening images you can either click open here or come up here to file and click open images right there so i'm just going to click the open right here and your file browser will open up, and I'm already pointed to my Sharpen AI test folder that I made for to show you this uh, test and review today. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all these images right here. I'm just clicking and dragging with my mouse to select them all. And then I'm just going to click on open. Uh, and the images that I'm using today are TIFF files. Now you can use uh, RAW files. Uh, I have a CAN, so I can use my CR2 files. You can use DNG files. So you can use any type of file that you want in Sharpen AI. So it's really, really nice. Okay. But this is what happens. The interface opens up and you notice it defaults at everything is selected. See where it says select all. Now, whenever I make adjustments over here in the adjustment section, everything will get the exact same adjustment. So if I added extra sharpness, they would all get extra sharpness. And let me just show you that right here. Let me add extra sharpness. And you'll see it'll update here and it updates pretty quick here and i'm only at, i'm at 100 percent is where i'm at and you can see right here there's the left is the before and the right is the after and i'm in the uh in the view you can change your views by coming up here to view and click view and right now i'm in split view but you can change that to a side by side view so there's different views that you can use um, i like them both if you're in the uh, side by side view if you click come up to your navigator you can click and just drag this and you can see so i kind of i'm torn between the uh, side by side side and the split so for now let's for this test let's just leave it in the split but you do have a side by side view that you can use as well okay so but whatever you do here will be reflected in all the settings down here if you're on select all now if i change this mode to stabilize so if i had some camera shake here and i clicked on stabilize it'll Stabilize takes a little longer to update because it's a more intense uh, adjustment there. So it takes a little bit longer. Not much longer, but a little bit longer. But you'll notice they all change to stabilize. So again, if you're in the select all mode, everything will get the same effect. But if you want to mix and match your effects, you can do that as well. Let's say we wanted to adjust each one of these images individually. So let's go ahead and just set this back to sharpen just a, as a good starting place right here, okay? So we're set back to sharpen. While the images are all selected, let's just go ahead and click on auto and get them all to the auto settings here, okay? So they're all set to auto and sharpen. Now let's go ahead to and uh, click select all, uncheck it, and now we can start from scratch, okay? 
So let's start with our first image up here. So let's just click on it right here. And again, you have the different views here. Uh, we could use the split view. And with the split view, you can just kind of wipe this across here. So that's kind of cool. But for my test, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the side-by-side um, -side view. And then we could just drag this around and see the difference. And every time I drag it, it's going to auto-update. Now, you can shut that auto-update off if you didn't want to have that on. There's, there's cases where you're going to want to shut that off, especially if you have a slower computer. My computer's pretty fast, so I don't have an issue with it. So I'm just going to leave it on. But we're looking here, and let's take a look at this section right here. But look at the difference. Look how much nicer that is. And that's just in the auto position here. Now, if you felt you needed to do some manual adjustments, you could just come here into manual. And you could go ahead and give it more sharpness. And there's also noise reduction here, so you can increase noise reduction or decrease it. You can even add grain if you needed it. But I find a lot of the times the auto works really well, especially just for capture sharpening on an image, and that looks really good. Let's go ahead and look at this. There's a little flower up in here, right here. I just want you to see the before and after. So here's the after, and there's the before. And that's just on uh, basically auto. In the uh, and it's got 50% sharpening, 50% noise reduction, no grain. But look at the difference between the image on the right and the left. Beautiful, beautiful job on that one. So all that one needs is sharpening on it. Okay, so now on to our next image. So let's click on the second image, which is this guy right here. So I'm just going to click in this area, and now we have this. Uh, have a butterfly here. Uh, it's had some weather on it. Look, it's got a little hole in its little wing there. Bummer, man. Uh, but we can go ahead and move this around a little bit here and take a look. And right now we're in the um, the manual position at 50% uh, sharpness and 50% noise reduction. Let's go ahead and click auto here. Okay, and it looks like that's where auto kind of defaults at for some reason, 50 and 50. But if we need a little more sharpening, let's pull up some sharpening here and see what we get. And it renders out pretty quick there. Let me double click sharpness and get it back to the default of 50. Let's click on stabilize because I think I had a little bit of camera shake on this one. Let's see what that does. Oh yeah, look at the difference there. Check that out from the left to the right. Isn't that amazing? And that's good, but if I needed more sharpness, I could go ahead and drag this up. And let's try it on focus. And I always like to try it on the different uh, the different settings because you just never know. What if I had a little soft focus? Now that's not doing too much to it, but I'll tell you for sure it's either sharpen or stabilize, but I'm going to put my money on stabilize because I think stabilize looks the best on this particular image. And that is that, and that is done. So the first one sharpened, the second one stabilized. Now let's move on to the next image here. This is going to be a flower here. Now this was shot at a very shallow depth of field, so there is a lot of areas that are out of focus here. Okay, so let's put it on auto. And there's the auto setting. But on the right is the sharp, and on the left is without the sharpening. So on this one, let's go ahead. Well, it's in stabilize right now. Let's put it on sharpen here. And let's go ahead and go to manual and... That's the sharpen mode. Let's take the sharpening and pull it up. Like, this could use a lot more sharpening, I think. Okay, and as you can see, even if I jack that up to 100%, I'm not going to get any halos, and it's not going to look super crunchy. This is great software, but look how much sharper it is. Beautiful. Does a beautiful job here. Let me double-click this and reset it. Let's try the stabilize. See what the stabilize does. And you notice it's not rendering because I already did do some stabilizing on it. And it remembers the last thing. So let's go ahead and bump this up a little bit. And you'll see the difference here. Now the stabilizing, you got to watch it. Because watch, if I take it the whole way up, let's see what it looks like here after it renders out. See that looks a little funky in there. So you got to be careful. You can't go too crazy. But it's, it's really working hard to pull this stuff into detail. But that looks really, really good, actually. Let's actually drag it down and look at some of these leaves down in here with the stabilization. Wow, look what sharpens it up. Now, that's way too much. So let's just back that off to about, let's try 67 and see what that does. Yeah, that looks really good. That looks really nice. So on this one, I think I would use uh, stabilization as well. I'll try focus as well with this one. Okay, let's try focus and see what that does. 
This is all real time. I'm not speeding up anything here. That's looking pretty good too. Let's check these leaves out down here. Hmm, that's not bad. There's a little bit of funkiness happening right in here. Uh, let me pull this back. Let's pull it back to 50. Try it again. Stabilize is the one I tend to use the most of, and that's that's not bad right there. But I still still think I like the stabilize better. So let's go back to stabilize. Yeah, my money's still on stabilize, so I'm going to use stabilize on that one. So so far we have a sharp and a stabilize and a stabilize, and let's go to our last image right here. When you click on the next image, it looks like it, whatever you were last set for, it will process that in that mode there. So let's start out with Sharpen here. Still learning the software. So there's Sharpen. You can definitely see it's a little soft in here. It doesn't look a whole lot different. It's a little bit sharper. And that, let's put it on auto here. Okay. Let's give it a little more sharpening. Let's take it up the whole way to 100% and see the difference here. Okay, it's definitely sharper, but I definitely think it could use some help. So let's try, let's double click sharpness, get it back to 50. Let's try stabilize, see what stabilize does. In fact, it was on stabilize, so it remembers the stabilize. And you can see it right there. There's the stabilize by default. So look at it on the left. Look at the blur in here. But look at that. That is amazing. Let's bump this up and see if it, what this does to it. And it's pretty good. Let's double click it, get it back to where it was originally. Let's go to focus and see what focus does on it. I love this software and it does a great job. I can't say enough about it. Now the focus is not helping as much, right? So let's even jack this focus the whole way up to 100%. Let's see if it does anything weird to the image here or makes it better, who knows. No, it doesn't do, it's not doing much for it, okay. And it's doing some weird stuff down in here, so it's definitely not going to be focused, so let's click on Stabilize. And now it's at 100%, so that's going to be way too much, I think. But now look at that. Look how soft that is, and look how that stabilized. I didn't have this on a tripod, but look at that tree up there. Let's even go down to this rock and see what it looks like down in this section here. Like, look at the softness on this rock, and watch what it does here. Look at this wood back in here. That is amazing. Even at 100%, it's not bad. I'm just going to back it off a little bit to like an 86. No, I might just bump it up a little more. Let's do a 90 on it. Isn't that truly amazing? So for capture sharpening, the sharpen mode is great. But if you have some issues in your sharpening, which a lot of times I do have issues in my sharpening, but stabilize, I'm probably using it a lot because it's really fixing my uh, camera shake issues. I'm not the steadiest hand and I don't like to use a tripod a whole lot. Uh, so a lot of times I'm kind of like out there not using a tripod. So the stabilization mode or the stabilized mode works really well for me. We're almost done, but I wanted to show you the layer masking, okay? So what I did was I changed the uh, zoom size to 50. So if I click here, you see you have all these different zoom sizes. I just changed it to 50 so we can see more of the image. And um, I'm still in the stabilized mode. I didn't change anything here, okay? But what I want to do is remove that sharpening from this part of the flower and this part of the flower right here, okay? Now, remember I told you about the auto update preview. I'm going to shut this off because when you're at this 50 uh when you're at this uh 50 zoom level here it takes a long time not a long time it could take up to a minute a minute and a half to render out so i'm going to shut that off and that's where that comes in handy when you're layer masking okay so i know i want to remove it from here and right here and right now you don't see any uh sharpening on the image right there when i shut the auto update off okay but anyway, I'm in the hide mode here. You have a show and a hide. So I want to hide it from this section of the flower and this section of the flower here. There's edgeware technology, just like they use in all their uh, software. Topaz, if you watch my videos on layer masking, you'll see how powerful this is. It's awesome. You have a radius adjustment, a softness adjustment, and an opacity adjustment, okay? So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit larger here. And I'm just going to paint it off right here. So I'm in the hide mode. So I'm going to paint it off right here. Right in this section right here. And then I right here, I didn't like it right here. So I'm just going to paint right in there like that. 
Okay. And if I click on overlay, you can see that's where I removed it. See, whatever's in red is getting the full sharpness adjustment and whatever is not in red is not getting the adjustment. So let's shut that off. And you can see I have a white mask and I painted with black because it was in the hide mode right there, okay? And then when I'm done, all I have to do is I can come back here and click on view again. Let's do single view. Let's get out of this masking mode here. And let's click our auto update here. And there's our auto update back. And as you can see, it's removed from right here and it's removed from down here. And it's that simple. Now to uh, go ahead and uh, save all this out, all you have to do is click here, come here to where it says start batch processing, give that a click and you'll get a dialog box that comes up. And then you could uh, file name, you could give it an auto file name or a custom file name. Now I like the auto file name because what it'll do is it'll say output will sharpen Output will have sharpen method appended to the original name. So it'll give you the original file name, but it'll say, for instance, stabilize. And this one will say sharpen. So that lets you know what it is. And your uh, save directory, you can put in a custom, direct, a custom directory or back into the source directory. And then you can uh, assign it a color profile, you know, pro photo, Adobe RGB, sRGB, you know, wherever you're going to put it, you'd want to change your profile. And um, let me think, what else here? Oh, and your preserved source format. This is important too. You could save it as a JPEG, a TIFF, PNG, or a, D a DNG digital negative, which is really cool too. And then when you're done, all you have to do is click start and it'll put it wherever you told it to go to. They'll all be batched out and it's just that simple. But there it is, Sharpen AI, the new update. I highly recommend it. It is awesome. Topaz Sharpen AI, what a great piece of software. Don't forget, there's a new update adding batch processing and layer masking capabilities. A great update. If you don't own this software yet, use my affiliate link down below. Uh, click on that link and you'll get 15% off if you use my coupon code David Kelly off of any uh, Topaz software. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new uh, tutorial, you'll be reminded about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.